Okay, time for some camera effects to really sell in this kind of underwater floating feel. So let's punch into our camera here, select it, hit I on the keyboard. I'm just going to reverse back to frame one. That's with shift and left arrow. I on the keyboard, location and rotation. Let's switch our shader window to graph editor. And here, let's take our first location. And if you don't have this side panel open, you might need to hit N on the keyboard and jump down to modifiers, add modifier, noise. And we can see we have a whole bunch of noise added to the curves. And we can see that looks uh, pretty erratic. So let us scale this way up, something like that, and turn the strength down so we get a nice kind of swaying which isn't too extreme and we can copy that with the little clipboard icon here and paste it to our other channels we don't want it to be exactly the same so let's offset it by quite a large margin see how that feels yeah, really nice and subtle. We're going to do the same with the rotation. So, yeah, that's way too much for the rotation. So we can turn the strength down by quite a lot. Maybe that's a bit too much. I'm going to turn the scale down a bit. Yeah, that feels kind of nice. Let us copy that effect onto our other rotation channels and offset them as well. Yeah, feeling good. Now the only other thing we want to do is when it explodes, we want to have the whole camera shake around. So we're going to do that with another noise modifier. So it kind of explodes at douche. What's that? It kind of explodes at 60. So we can hit M on the keyboard to leave a marker and then control M to rename it to explosion. So at that point, we want to really rattle the camera a lot. So we're going to add another noise modifier. Give it quite a bit of strength here. That scale was probably quite good, actually. Oof, wow. Uh, we want to restrict the frame range to start at 60, end at just try 70. We want a sharp in, a sharp attack, and a slower release. Yeah, I mean, that's quite erratic. So I think I'm, I, you know, we, this effect's going to be so quick. Let's only put it on a few channels. Let's put it on the X rotation as well. So add a new noise, restrict, start 60 and 70, fade out over, let's say, five frames. Let's give it a little bit more to finish up that ease out. that in the motion blur as well. So like, you know, we, we see that frame here, but if we do a render, we can see just how extreme the motion blur is. It might also be beneficial to uh, increase our number of steps for the final render, as if we just render into slot two, we can see that it actually generates the, the position. So it samples the position multiple times which gives a slightly smoother motion blur at the expense of longer render times. 
So to complete our explosion look, we're just going to crank the exposure here. So hovering over, hit I on the exposure, I on the gamma as well, just in case we want to tweak that. Oops, put it on the wrong keys. On 61, we want it to be very bright. Boom. We want it to be quite contrasty as well. So let's just tweak the gamma. Something like that would be cool. I, I. And then we want it to, before 70, we kind of want it to return back to normal. So if we select these two, and you could do Shift H to hide all the other ones, and we can select those two keys here. Ah, uh, Shift D, duplicate it over. So you can hit N to hide that toolbar, and grab and move. Looking pretty good. And just for a little bit of a nice tweak here, we're going to do a render of, let's get some highlights like that, F12. That's our render. Let's jump over to the compositor. Use nodes. Just separate these out. I'm going to shift right click and cut here so we have a new node point and then shift and then control shift and click that so we hook up a viewer node and we are going to add yeah some lens distortion tiniest bit of dispersion and also some lens flaring. So we can do that with a map range. So if we plug our image into a map range. Let's look at the output here. And let's crank it up a lot. So from min, let's go to six to 10, let's say. So we really are just isolating the highlight. And let's take that, blur it. Okay, and we want to blur it a lot along the X. We want another map range node. I'm just going to duplicate this over and tweak the values just so we get a nice, a nice blur along the horizontal. Maybe let's introduce a little bit of vertical as well. Something like that. And then we want to bring up our trusty color ramp Add a kind of blue tint to it. Let's go all the way blue. Then we can take our image, mix it with this, and go over to add. And there we have a rather snazzy lens flare, which will react to, you know, when there's a super strong highlight in this in the scene will get that lens flare. And when there isn't, it'll go away. So it looks pretty obvious here, but it will be subtle on the final export. Subtle, not massively subtle, like, uh, but yeah, it won't be omnipresent. Cool, that's looking good. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Firstly, let's jump over to our particles here, uh, selecting our particle emitter, and let's bake all our dynamics. good to go. Let's choose our sampling. Um, 64 is fine, to be honest. Motion blur, I'm going to crank up to 8. And on export, this renders reasonably fast, so I'm going to go FFmpeg, encoding, MP4, quality, perceptually lossless. And choose an output path. And then hit Control F12. As usual, the blend files, including the little music sting, uh, are available to the fantastic Patreon peeps uh, in a link in the description. And if you do create some cool title sequences using this method, then feel free to let me know on Twitter at Louis Dumont. 
Thanks very much for watching.